I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe within him. It's the power to change my life. I believe in my heart. Therefore, I confess with my mouth that today, this day, after having heard the word of God, my life will be changed forever. Never again the same. Never, never in Jesus' name. Amen. May that never grow old with you. Amen. It's the stuff that you do everything. You talk to the greater athletes, the greater performers. It's the regiment of stuff they do over and over and over again. You got to learn to keep on showing up and keep on practicing that stuff. Faith doesn't come by having heard. It comes by hearing. Over in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, today being, today being Family Sunday, I want to speak on the subject of a successful family. We were ministering last week on baptism. And I'm going to spend some more time on dealing with the typologies and stuff of baptism from the Old Testament, powerful in there. We tried to cram a whole lot in the last week. Um, and I want to, we'll start there again and deal with the other baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, also baptism in the body of Christ. Praise God. And you start receiving assignments that are relative to what your endowments of grace and giftings are. Praise the Lord. But uh, we're excited. We've had a lot of response for water baptism. And uh, I'm just waiting for supernatural things that happen in your life. Amen. I want to mention here today on a successful family. Some things that I've seen, uh, you know, and you know, and a lot of people. There's, and I try to preface things by saying it like this: but there's something. If it's my opinion, I'll say it's my opinion, or this is the way I see it. Uh, and then there are times, and there's times I just I just have to tell people, okay, you got, you know, you get, you keep your argument, and I'll keep my results. You can argue your argument, and I'll just keep putting my results on, on display. I have people at times, and people just don't. You know, you don't have to agree with me. But if I got fruit, you better, you, better, you better at least consider what I'm saying. If somebody's got results, that's what Hebrews 6 verse number 12 says. It's powerful, powerful. Hebrews 6 verse number 12, it said, don't be slothful, but rather be an imitator of those who through faith and patience are inheriting the promises. Somebody say results. results. It's all about results. results. It's all about results. I mean, I, I'm, man, I'm, I'm too old. I'm going to return six years old. I know I don't act like it. <laughs> I know I don't act like it. <laughs> I'm going to turn 60, man, but I'm about to do some results. Man, I ain't got time, I ain't got time for no arguments. You can, get, you can get drunk on the fumes, intoxicated with, uh, with the wine of your opinion if you want to. I just want results. I don't have to be right. I want some results. If I need to change to get the results, I'll change to get the results. But I'm all about, how many of y'all want some results in your life? And God wants you to have the results in your life. Next week, the Joneses were in a ministry. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Go, oh, man. It's because we want your family life. We want your life to go better. <clears throat> I've often said this from time to time with our family. I just want things to go better for you in your life. And in order to do that, though, sometimes we have to make adjustments. You know, some people, some people just refuse to change, you know. Man, no, I don't have to be right or anything else, man. I just want the results that God wants me to have. And God wants to bless your family, bless your family life. And there's some things that I found to be true. Let me start, this, let me start out by saying this. If you're, going to have, if you're going to have a successful family life, today's family is not. If you're going to have a successful family life, you're going to have to have some vision. Let me share my personal story with you. I heard Joyce Meyer say this often. Uh, Joyce Meyer said, all I do is preach my life. <laughs> the stuff I went through, I'll show you how I turned it around. Man, I think it's a good place to start. Some people preach theory, but I love a testimony. Every one of you in here today have got some reflection of the glory of God in a testimony, a story, something God's done for you. Anybody here today, you know God did that for you. <laughs> it's powerful. The hope that it gives people is amazing. And, uh, you know, one of the things that you've got to have, you've got to have a vision for your family. This is one of my personal experiences with that. A number of years ago, I used to watch, I used to watch television coming up, and um, I always looked at uh, my three sons, uh, looked at my three sons. What was the one that Brian Keith was in with Jody and Toby? You remember that? What was Family Affair. Uh, the Brady Bunch. Uh, what about Fred McMurray? And Chip and those guys. M my three sons. All these guys. And all these guys, all these guys were, um, all these guys were, were involved in architectural drafting. It was something that, and something about it bothered me. And I'm praying here today. I'm praying today that God would divinely bother you in an era where you've gotten too complacent, too settled. Amen. Something about it bothered me. And, uh, it was, and this is why God, God will use things to aggravate us at times. Mike Murdoch said one time, the thing that aggravates you is God's assignment for you to fix it. And don't turn around and look at the person sitting right beside of you right now. <laughs> and there's things, that need, there's things that need to aggravate us. If you don't, you'll never change it. Right. And as the Holy Spirit's calling and summoning us to change to another glory... 
the glories, glories, reflections of God. How many of you want to keep growing in the areas of your life that keeps reflecting the will of God? You may have some areas in your life right now that don't reflect God's best for you right there. Don't you stop. God's got a bigger place for you. Amen. You need vision. You need vision. This is what God did with me. And I sit there and I looked at this. <laughs> Something about it bothered me. I came, out, I came out of a family. Our father died when we were young. I, mean, in, I think it was in the seventh grade when my father passed away. We had our share of heartaches and, and, uh, and disappointments. I had every opportunity to be incredibly dysfunctional and do something stupid and seal myself in history. I could have done something crazy with the heartache and some of the stuff we went through. Then we went through it as a family. And we got through it. You don't have to be a picture of what you went through. It's time for you to start looking like what you believe. But you need some vision. And look over in Luke, the 15th chapter, everything's lost. Lost lamb, lost coin, lost son. But then in Luke, the 16th chapter, it talks about stewardship. As a matter of fact, the word prodigal, we talk about the prodigal son in Luke 15 chapter. The word prodigal means to cast forth your finances and have nothing to show for it. It's not even talking about sin. It's talking about stewardship. And we steward over our families. We're stewards, we're caretakers. And some of y'all may be carrying the lion's share of the spiritual responsibilities in your home, certain seasons in your life. Sometimes we have wives, you've got, you've got women in here. <laughs> you've got women in here. And you're the, pretty much the dominant influence in the life of your children, what have you. We're in different seasons of our life. And family looks different ways for different people. We don't have all these perfect scenarios. But something happened with me when I sat there and I looked at that. When I sat there and I looked at that, there was something about that I noticed and it bothered me. God, have you ever noticed what you notice? God will cause you to notice certain things. And I looked in there and I saw this. I said, man, and this is, where, this is the way it struck me. This is the way it struck me. I said, can't a black man be a draftsman and sit down and have his whole family around him in the house that he owns around the dinner table and talk to him about their day at school? There's sometimes something needs to bother you. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm calling everyone out here today. Defy the demographics. Yes. Defy the demographics. Yes. The thing that's saying you're in a situation in life. You may be single. You may come from an abuse, abused childhood. Some of, you've got, some of you have got every right to fail, every right to be dinked up. You don't have to have an emotional limp all your life. Yes. And guess what? I went and did it. Something about that just bothered me. I said, can a black man be a draftsman? Can he own his own house? I'll tell you, I got mad skills, y'all. I didn't go into ministry because I couldn't do nothing else. <laughs> I went out and did it. Defied the demographics. How you do it? You do it with a vision. You've got to have a vision. Vision will keep you anchored when everything in your natural world screaming out, it ain't so. Your vision said, I would have fainted had I not been believing to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Man, I went and did it. I went to school. I became a draftsman. I got a family. I own my home. Believe me, you own me another house. You may own me another house. Amen. A second house. Somebody say, so be it. You need to defy the demographics. You look at the father over in the 15th chapter of Luke when he looked out there and he saw that prodigal son. The Bible says very distinctly that he saw it coming from a distance. That's vision. That's vision, gay. You can see it coming from a distance. Even when your children, your children sometimes will do some crazy stuff. They get stuck in that insane cycle sometimes. Even at our very best, you can end up there. But vision sees it coming from a distance. Notice this. Notice the prodigal, notice that father of that prodigal son wasn't out there, wasn't out there trying to keep him out of the pig pen. That's another one of the key ingredients to a successful family is you got to show some tough love sometimes. Amen. You notice the father's not down there trying to keep that boy out of the pig pen. If, you, if the love for the father's house is not great enough, the next best thing is a successful pig pen conversion. And all the strong parents said, <laughs> amen. You've got to have some vision for their life. Vision is what keeps them on track. Vision will anchor your decision making. Vision will determine the priorities that you have in your life. Vision will help direct them when they're selecting the relationship they have in your life. There's a lot of teaching that needs to take place in children. As a matter of fact, if you turn with me to Deuteronomy 6 chapter, I want to show you this over here. There's a lot of teaching. Somebody say impartation. 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 A lot of instruction has got to take place. Successful family. Families need to talk more. I feel like social media concerns me some right now. 
As a matter of fact, it concerns me greatly. You'll see parents walking ahead of children in grocery stores, and sometimes you got parents on a call caught up in social media. There is a very seductive influence to social media and everything right now, especially with children, because it's given the parents a sense of relief from tending to and having to care for the children. But what you don't understand is they're going to become the manifestation of the stuff they're putting inside of them. Deuteronomy 6, chapter, verse number 7, y'all have it? Deuteronomy 6, verse number 7, do you have it? It's page 252. And thou shalt teach them how? Diligently. Diligently. And to your children. That means like consistently. Yeah. The Lord told me this years ago when I was dealing with Tyrone with Gary Lewis, I would be, I have a strong influence on Gary Lewis and them and Tyrone uh, at times with their academics and with sports, this, that, and the other. Whatever you, whatever you do, this is what the Lord told me. This is, what, this is what God told me. He said, only do what you can do consistently with them. You need to teach them diligence. And that's what Deuteronomy 6 is talking about. He said, teach them diligently to your children. Thou shalt, teach, uh, teach, uh, thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. Verse number 8. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and thy gates. Of course, it goes on to say there in, uh, in Deuteronomy 6, verse number 11. Just write this down. Ver Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse number 11 and 12. And also over in Deuteronomy 8 and 12, he comes back and says the same thing. He said, beware lest thou forget. The purpose of vision is to remind you where you're going. And there's sometimes you'll lose your direction in life. But your vision is what draws you back to it. You need to raise your children and parents need to lead themselves in such a way that it, tell it reeks in a vision throughout your entire house. God's got a bigger plan for you. There's times, I mean, the children, you've heard me say this before, you, and you, you can't hear it enough. And that is you need, to be more, you need to be the parent and not focus on trying to be their child. They'll think you later. I call it the potato principle. Uh, you plant them now, they'll dig you later. <laughs> plant them now, they'll dig you later. And they'll understand and appreciate you later. You're not trying to be there. You're not trying to be their bud. You're not trying to be. You're not trying to be their boy. You're not trying to be down with them. Now my parents are so cool. Well, praise God if you think that. But the more important thing is for you to teach them the things that's going to cause them to be successful in the long run. In order to do that, you got to have vision, and tell them if you've got to have vision, you ought to be the dominant influence. The dominant influence in their life. And you start in that do, uh, Proverbs 22 verse number six says, uh, "Train up a child in the way they should go." What is that? That's vision. In the Amplified Bible, it says this. It said, train them up in towards their inclinations or their gifting. See, there's giftings. There's no child born without some sort of significance to the earth. You have a grace and endowment of God that makes you significant to the outcome of somebody. You're not without importance. And when life is screaming and crying, and they had to deal with challenges in their life. They need to understand the concept of vision and how it anchors you even when what you see is contrary to what you believe in. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And of course, he goes on and he said, beware lest thou forget. That's Deut uh, Deuteronomy 6, 12, and I think it's in Deut Deuteronomy 8 or 11 and 12. And it says over there, the same thing. He comes back in again. He said, beware lest thou forget. Provi uh, vision keeps you from forgetting. Vision keeps you from forgetting. He said, write it down. Watch the stuff that your children have got in front of them and parents. Parents need to walk out these principles, live these principles. And don't give your children the impression that you live without challenges in your life. I said this to our elders before. I don't want you to have a perfect life, but I do want you to show the congregation how you walk by faith. Even when you have challenges in your life. Amen. Yes. Amen. You got to have vision. You want a successful family, you got to have vision. Number two, you need sanctuary. Your children need to understand the atmosphere of their life. It's all up to them. You need to create such a presence in your home. That's the reason I don't, we don't put up with a lot of drama drip. We don't put up with drama drip. We don't put up with it in the church. And, and when, and I don't, just keep looking straight ahead right now. And we've had, we've had people who are not even believers come into the church. And what do they say? The atmosphere in here is because we don't put up with drama drip. We don't let strife, zero strife policy. We don't put up a strike. Why? Because it's all about the atmosphere. We create sanctuary. We, and in your home, I encourage your parents to do this. And when parents and husbands and wives, don't bring your children over into it, but they need to see you walking through things and practicing the word and show them the reality of the presence of God. As a matter of fact, I'm praying that glory will be the atmosphere of your house. Uh, somebody, somebody should have said something right there. I'm praying the glory of God will be the atmosphere in your house. Somebody shout out sanctuary. I'm praying that the atmosphere of your house will be so set 
that even if your children get out there and get off track and they're trying to find their way, they'll remember the atmosphere they had in their house when they came up. Amen. Sanctuary. Man, the atmosphere in your home. And my, man, I'm telling you, life and death. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. How many of you have ever walked into someone's house and tell they've been arguing? That's because it's in their words. They're going through the motion. She's still cooking the casserole. He's still setting the table, man. But just then there's something but this atmosphere. <laughs> life and death is in the power of the tongue. You establish sanctuary in your house. You need to get some of the carnality of your house. You need to get some worshiping going in your house. You said, well, 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 we sing praise and worship songs when we go to church, but I love Marvin Gaye. Hallelujah. Man, you need to understand. They need to see that you enjoy the presence of the Lord. Enjoy the presence of God. You need to keep, let them jam. If they're going to go R.B., man, we got, let me tell you, we got rap and everything in the kingdom of God. Man, we ain't taking a backseat to nobody. Snoop Dogg is even getting over in the kingdom of God now. <laughs> yes, he is. You heard him? <laughs> Snoop Dogg, man. They all coming in. Amen. Glory on you and in your house. Yes. Such an atmosphere in your house because you prioritize God's presence. And you don't live in an apologetic attitude to your children. Say, I know it's boring, but this is what we do. No, man, I'm loving the journey. Why don't you come and join me? Matter of fact, you'll get a lot of mileage out if you'll smile more in front of your children. <laughs> Sanctuary. Establish the presence of God. If your children ever get off track, they remember that incredible presence they had in their home. Number three. Number three. An amazing unconditional love. It keeps the front porch light on. In your marriages, the Jones, I'm trying to stay with marriage. I'm going to let the Jones handle that next week. We've got to talk a little bit about relationships. Some of you are single. Some of you are single again. Your spouse may have moved on to glory. You may be divorced, separated, what have you, whatever, whatever season of life you're in. God's already seen it here and made provisions in your life. He's your heavenly father. Isaiah 46, verse number 10. He declares the end from the beginning. Where you are right now doesn't define who you are. Defy the demographics. That amazing, unconditional love. Where your children know they can come talk to you. And in, in, in the family, when you're in, in your spouses, whatever situation you're in, whatever season, whatever demographic you settle into, door, that front door, it's always, that, always open. And we keep the front porch light on. They always know that they can come and talk. It's unconditional love. I may not agree with you. But you're still my boy. You may go, I know you're acting crazy right now, but you're still my boy. Man, I remember, I'll never forget when Tyrone was back out there. And some people say, well, every, you know, and I've heard, I've heard, I've had people tell me this before. So everybody's not like your children. Yeah. Well, personalities vary, but the principles work for everybody. Yeah. Personalities vary. And calling's different. I know everyone's never not in the house of preachers. As a matter of fact, most of the time, PKs, preachers' kids, are some of the absolute worst. I had a guest minister in one time. We're talking about the church and church prospering, growing, growing, building, doing this, that, and the other. He said, okay, okay, okay. He's laid up in my car. Okay, what about your kids? And he expected me to pull a towel out. I said, oh, God, pray. <laughs> I said, no. I said, they be giant killers just like their daddy. I don't believe if you'd have some success with your children. And that unconditional love is going to go a long way with that. Unconditional love. Not you always tell them what they want to hear, but they know that you love them. Irregardless of where they are, what they're experiencing, they're in temporary insanity and they're kind of like that. You've had, a, you've had, a, you've had a, a wash or something get stuck in a spin cycle. See, kids get stuck in a spin cycle. Tyrone was out there one time, man, man, I'll never forget this. And I tribute Colette. I give Colette more honor than I do me. I really do. Tyrone was struggling. It was largely my fault. It's because I was struggling spiritually because Tyrone was where he was. I, really, I still believe that. I'm convinced of that. We struggled in college and stuff. That was me. That was me. That wasn't your fault. Now, you got stuck in for just a minute now. But okay, just... <laughs> and we sit in one night and you say sometime, but you haven't been through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've had to believe through and see past. And had to practice the love walk. Guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4, verse 23. 
with all diligence for out of the issues of life. I was laying there in bed one night. I didn't know it was even open. It was dark in the room except for this little bit of a silhouette, a little bit of a shade from the dusted dawn light. Y'all know what a dusted dawn light is, don't you? Laying there in the bedroom and Colette said, we hadn't heard from Tyrone in so long. Tyrone was struggling in life. We would get the devils after the call of God on his life. And Colette, I'll never forget Colette saying, we don't even know if he's alive. We hadn't heard from him. We said, we don't even know if he's alive. Had to keep believing God for him. Had to keep believing God for him. The devil's after that call of God on his life. And I was, I've been struggling some too. I had a call of God on my life. And, and there's a number of you here today, your children, your children and some people that you have influence in their life. You need to understand the decisions that you make in their life. I mean, that's the reason the Bible said the teachers have greater condemnation because someone's going to listen to you. So, I mean, you can say the stupidest thing. Y'all remember people following Forrest Gump when he was headed to the Mississippi River. Y'all remember that? Somebody's going to follow you. Someone's going to follow you. I got in there, man, and we prayed. We believed God. We stayed there. But one thing he knew, he came home. I just, I remember Tyrone just came down and laid this leg down on the bed beside his mother. I got nothing to Why? Because he felt the atmosphere of unconditional love unconditional love we keep that way with one another i may not be happy with everything you're doing right now but i'll tell you one thing that love man's going to be out there and i'm never disclaiming you you know what that is that's a picture of your heavenly father god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, christ died unconditional love and keep that out there and keep that set in your life you want your children to come to you. Yeah. You don't want them to go to the wrong people right. who are compromised as to why they're trying to keep them in their life. Yeah. They're a liability to them, not an asset. Yeah. Number three, you need the blessing of the Lord operating in your life through boundaries. If you look over here in uh, Judges, over in Judges, the 14th chapter, Judges 14 chapter, verse number six, you need, your children need to understand and parents need to understand this. You should be already be walking in this. As a matter of fact, I think it's good sometimes for your parents that you turn the, turn the social media stuff off and talk around the table. Talk around the table and keep, make sure that the boundaries are being held in place in their life. The greater the calling of God, the greater significance of boundaries are. The greater the call in your life, the greater significance of boundaries are. And let your children know and those that you have influence on them in life. And just having children don't make you moms and dads. It's the ones who raise them. Amen. Now, I didn't feel a whole lot of love right there, but I know I'm right smack on. I got my finger on God's pulse. And on reality, I'm being real, real, real talk. You remember the movie, uh, A Few Good Men, Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise? Remember that iconic quote in there? And Tom Cruise said, tell me I want the truth. Remember what Jack Nicholson's response was? You can't handle the truth. I'd like to talk real, real with y'all for just a moment. Amen. But something, you know, you say you want the truth, but do you really want to? I, because you may, I may tell you some stuff you don't want to hear. But there's times you have to, you have to learn to speak the truth in love. You'll learn to speak the truth in love. And you have to teach your children boundaries. One of the greatest examples of that is Samson. Over in Judges, the 14th chapter, it's page 350. It's Josh, Joshua Judges. Judges right after, the, uh, 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 right after um, Joshua. A verse number, let's start verse number five. It said, then Samson, Samson was born under the Nazarite vow. He would never eat, he would never eat any unclean thing, nor drink wine, nor shave his head. You see that in Judges 13. Just write this down, Judges 13, verse four and five. And he went out and he killed a lion. Now look at this, look, 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 look. Judges 14, chapter verse six. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him. That line, as he would a kid or a little goat, he had nothing in his hand. Now look at the end of that. It said, he told not his father or his mother what he had done. When your children stop talking to you. You understand, they, when they understand that their boundaries is because of their greatness. Because at some time in their life, they'll, have, they'll experience stuff that makes them feel smaller. Just like us, as grown-ups, as you're walking this progressive pilgrimage of faith in our lives, there's times we'll face some stuff that's bigger than us. And they need, to, they need to understand that the boundaries that you keep in your life was what raises you up to face every obstacle in your life. The greater the call of God, the greater the need is for boundaries and limitations. You can't hang with just anybody. You can't talk just any way. You can't think just any way because the call of God is so great on your life. Always building them up because the world will tear them down so they can use them for their purposes. Yeah. 
Yeah, the blessing of boundaries. Listen, I've said this before, I want to say it again. You've got to learn to insulate them when you can't isolate them. You can't keep them away from all, from all bad influence. So you've got to insulate them. You've got to put the right stuff. You've got to insulate them for when you can't isolate them. There's sometimes you can't keep them away from negative influences. So they're out there exposed to some of them. We've taken this out of context in 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, when it said to come out from amongst them, you know, blase, 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 be ye separate. Well, that's more an attitude than anything else. There's sometimes you can't control that. And when you can't, you have to make sure that what's on the outside of you doesn't get inside of you. No one ever drowns because of the water outside of the boat. It's the water that gets inside of you. And people don't drown in life until they get filled up with the stuff, they get filled up with the stuff that's going on around them. Amen. The blessing of God. And my last one here, the awesome, awesome, awesome. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You got to have some prophetic moments. If you want a successful home life, if you want a successful family, you got to have some prophetic moments. Say it with me. Prophetic moments. Nothing will mark the conscience of a family and the direction of a family like those moments when the Holy Ghost says. Amen. There's times your children will be facing things and God will talk to you and tell you stuff that they thought she was a fly on the wall. you got to have some prophetic moments. There's some times that God will talk to a whole house. God will talk to a whole, a whole house. It happened years ago when Colette was diagnosed with this condition with her heart. She was on, Colette was on a, um, she had some sort of a blockage in her heart. She got, was on the treadmill. She about passed out and she was getting a checkup. I know you remember all of this. And I talked to the Lord. Now sit down, Gary Lewis was on, Tyrone was at school on scholarship playing basketball. Gary Lewis was at home. I had a prophetic moment. I said, this is what the Lord has said to me. And the Lord told me, he said, you used to love to give. You used to love my voice. You used to love my word. He said, but then life happened. Man, I came to a broken place. I went and got me a loaf of bread. Diane, you were there the day we had the procedure. I took a, I took a lid. I didn't have a wafer. Man, I went out and got a lid off of a curd jar or something, man, and made me some wafer, wafers out of wheat bread. And had some grape juice. And we sit down and took communion yeah. off of that prophetic word in a prophetic moment when we had crisis in our life. And our children have seen the supernatural. Amen. And the life's been marked by that. Rest of it. Rest of it. And I acknowledge it. Acknowledge my shortcomings. Acknowledge that prophetic. In that prophetic moment where God spoke to our house. Yeah. Rest of it. Went out that day and they call it a false diagnosis. It wasn't a false diagnosis. I got caught up smack dab in the middle of a prophetic moment and made the adjustments in my life. And the God of the breakthrough showed up in my house just like he'll do for you. You got to have some moments when your parents, when your children know it's a healthy fear of God when they see that their mama hears God. Mama's got her finger on God's pulse for that job. Man, when they start out, they respect God's presence, and you're all expecting now. Your child needs you to hear God. Don't let them get filled up with the world's voice. Let the child learn your voice right now. Start laying your hand on Crystal and talking to the fruit of the womb right now. Y'all didn't mind everybody knowing. Y'all got it on Facebook, right? I just want to make sure I'm not in trouble. <laughs> let the child learn your voice, Tony. Brother Brian, let him learn your voice. And in doing so, let him learn the voice of God. And it's in prophetic moments, prophetic moments, you teach them to respect the presence of God. And when your children get away from the presence of God, they remember it because it's a marked place in their life. Proverbs 23, verse 9 and 10 said, don't remove the landmarks. You need to have some prophetic moments. If, your children see your, if the children see your greatest passion, if the children see your greatest passion, is ESPN, hunting, cars. Let me tell you something. You're marking their life with the wrong stuff. You need to show them how you value the voice of God. How hearing God is irreplaceable. Nothing can take the place of God. And let them witness the supernatural in your life through those prophetic moments when you hear from God. And may you experience the glory of God in every one of your houses. 
I pray this for every family in here today. For those of you, for those of you who have blood children, and for those of you who have parented somebody else's child, you're just as much a father. You're just as much a mother. I pray for the glory of God to be revealed in every one of your houses. In Jesus' name. I pray that your house will be a place of sanctuary that you'll do the work. You'll put the work in. You'll set the atmosphere. You'll set the spiritual barometer of your house in prophetic moments. And that your house will be covered with the unconditional, absolute love, agape love of God. To always know the front porch is light on. I pray here today that every one of your children will, uh, will rise up and call you blessed. That they'll walk in the promise of God and in the gift and the calling of God on their life. That's without repentance in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying, I'm declaring, I'm agreement with Isaiah 60. That your son shall return from afar and your daughters will nurse at your side. In Jesus' name. I come against every curse that's working against every house. My God, somebody take this. Don't make me work at all. Don't make me work at all. I come against every curse that opposes the wholeness of your house. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. May the blessing of the Lord rest in your house. May the glory of God be the atmosphere of your house. And may your children walk with God. I pray for every marriage in here today, every relationship here today. I pray for the blessing of God to abound in your life constantly. Because you practice walking in the place of the commanded blessing. Father, I pray I come against challenges in households and in families here today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, show yourself strong. Show yourself strong. I come against the devil in his operation. Judas said the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I'm coming that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Father God, I pray for a rescuing and a recovery of the atmosphere. Hear me, to hear me, hear me. I'm in a prophetic moment. I pray for a recovery of the atmosphere of every house in here today. A recovery of the atmosphere. Mid start, if there's a man in that house, stand up and be a man of God. Start praying. I pray for some divine brokenness in here today, some real brokenness. Humility. Humility, where you come to the end of yourself so he can start his work in your life. I pray here today by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the power of God, you feel your supernatural work in every house. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come here, baby.